You've been told to do your Kegels. Seriously. Your doctor, your physical therapist, maybe even an article you read online has sworn by them. For decades, they've been the undisputed champion of pelvic health. But what if I told you that the key to a truly strong, smart, and functional pelvic floor might not be the Kegel, but this, a deep, controlled squat? What if the same exercise you do for powerhouse legs and glutes holds a secret weapon for the very foundation of your core? Today, we are putting Kegels and deep squats head-to-head in the ultimate pelvic floor showdown. We're going to break down the science, compare the pros and cons, and figure out what's really going on. By the end of this, you'll know exactly how to build a pelvic floor that's not just strong, but ready for anything life throws, lifts, or sneezes at it. The problem. Why we focus on the pelvic floor. All right, before our contenders enter the ring, let's have a quick chat about why this is such a big deal. Your pelvic floor isn't just one muscle. It's a brilliant net of muscles, ligaments, and tissues slung like a hammock at the base of your pelvis. Think of it as the literal floor of your core. These muscles have some major jobs, holding up pelvic organs like the bladder and prostate, keeping you in control of your bladder and bowels, stabilizing your spine, and playing a huge role in sexual function. When this support system gets weak or out of sync, it can lead to problems that millions of men deal with in silence. That little leak when you cough or jump, constantly feeling like you have to pee, pelvic pain, or even erectile dysfunction. These issues can pop up after prostate surgery, from heavy lifting, with aging, or from living a chair-glued lifestyle. For years, the go-to prescription has been simple. Just strengthen that hammock. And that brings us to our reigning champion. Contender number one, the Kegel, the reigning champion. The Kegel, named after Dr. Arnold Kegel back in the 1940s, is an isolation exercise. Its only goal is to contract and relax the pelvic floor muscles, just like doing a bicep curl to build your arm. You're trying to lift and squeeze the muscles you'd use to stop the flow of pee or hold back gas. The pros, why Kegels became king. Let's give credit where it's due. Kegels can be amazing in the right situations. They are the gold standard for creating that initial mind-muscle connection. For a lot of men, the pelvic floor is uncharted territory. They've never thought about activating those muscles before. Kegels are a great way to just find them and feel them work. For problems that are clearly about muscle weakness, like stress urinary incontinence, a solid Kegel routine has a ton of clinical evidence to back it up. By strengthening that muscular sling, you give more support to the urethra, which helps stop leaks during a sudden laugh or jump. They're simple. You can do them anywhere, and you don't need any equipment, making them a super accessible starting point. The cons, the trouble with isolation, but the reign of the Kegel isn't perfect. First off, a lot of people do them wrong, squeezing their butt, thighs, or abs, or holding their breath, which totally misses the point. But the bigger problem is about function. Your body doesn't work in isolated parts. Your pelvic floor is designed to be part of a team, working in sync with your diaphragm, your breathing muscle, deep abs, and back muscles. Just doing Kegels is like training only the drummer and expecting the whole orchestra to sound incredible. It misses the bigger picture. And here's the other thing. Not all pelvic floor issues come from weakness. Many men suffer from a hypertonic, or overly tight, pelvic floor. In those cases, doing more Kegels is like constantly making a fist. It can actually make things like pelvic pain, urinary urgency, and even erectile issues worse by adding even more tension. The biggest limit is this. Kegels teach contraction, but they don't teach your pelvic floor how to work during real life like when lifting, jumping, or, you guessed it, squatting. Contender number two. The deep squat the functional challenger. The deep squat is one of the most basic, natural human movements. 
We're all born knowing how to do it perfectly, but modern life and all our sitting has kind of stolen it from us. A squat is a compound exercise, meaning it fires up a bunch of muscle groups all at once. Your glutes, quads, hamstrings, and most importantly, your entire core system, pelvic floor included. The pros, a symphony of strength and flexibility. Unlike a Kegel, which just shortens the pelvic floor, a squat takes these muscles through their full dynamic range of motion. As you lower down, your pelvic floor has to lengthen and relax to control the movement. As you stand back up, it recoils and gently contracts to give you stability and power. This lengthening and shortening is exactly how your pelvic floor needs to work in your day-to-day -day life. Squats are the definition of functional fitness. Strengthening your pelvic floor within the squat pattern makes you stronger and more stable when you do things like sit, stand, lift heavy at the gym, or pick up a kid. It teaches the pelvic floor to work with the rest of your core and lower body as a coordinated team. This integration improves posture and stability, which helps prevent problems from even starting. Plus, deep squats boost blood flow to the pelvic region, which is great for tissue health healing and can even support erectile function. The cons. The demand for good form. The main catch with squats is that you have to do them right. Bad form, like tucking your tailbone under at the bottom, the dreaded butt wink, can put way too much pressure on your pelvic floor and lower back, potentially making things worse. For someone with a lot of weakness, knee pain, or stiff joints, a full deep squat might not be possible right away. And that's okay. Modifications, like starting with a partial squat or holding onto a chair for support, are key. The verdict and the winner is... So who wins the ultimate pelvic floor battle? Kegels or deep squats? Honestly, this was never a fair fight because they aren't really enemies. They're partners. The real mistake is picking one over the other. The true winner is the smart approach that uses both. Kegels win the award for best foundational exercise. They are fantastic for building that initial mind-muscle connection and for targeted strengthening when you have diagnosed muscle weakness. They teach you the basic language of your pelvic floor. Deep squats win the award for best functional exercise. They take that basic strength and teach it how to show up in the real world. They build a resilient, coordinated, and truly useful pelvic floor that can handle the pressures of a dynamic life. They strengthen the whole system not just one part. So, the ultimate winner for long-term pelvic health is the intelligent combination of both. It's about getting past endless, isolated squeezes and learning to weave that awareness into whole body movements. The how-to action plan, putting it all together. So, what does this look like in practice? Here's a simple plan to get the best of both worlds. First, make sure you can do a proper Kegel. Sit or lie down comfortably. Without squeezing your butt, legs, or abs, gently contract and lift the muscles between your scrotum and anus. Think about trying to stop the flow of urine or pulling your testicles up towards your body. Hold for three to five seconds, and then, this is just as important, fully release and relax for three to five seconds. That relaxation part is half the battle. Once you've got that feeling, it's time to bring it into the squat. Let's call it the functional squat. Stand with your feet about shoulder width apart or whatever feels stable. As you start to lower, take a slow breath in. Picture your pelvic floor hammock gently lengthening and widening downward. Only go as low as you can with good form, keeping your back straight and heels on the floor. As you push through your feet to stand up, breathe out and do a gentle Kegel-like lift. Think about gently shortening your penis or lifting your scrotum again. As you rise, you're gently lifting those muscles up and in. This coordinates your pelvic floor with your glutes and core, which is exactly how they're all designed to work together. Start with a range of motion that feels safe. 
You can even practice this by just sitting and standing from a chair, focusing on that inhale and lengthen down, exhale and lift up rhythm. This is how you train your pelvic floor to be responsive, not just tight. The whole Kegels versus squats debate was kind of a trick question. It's not about choosing one. It's about evolving our thinking from simple isolation to intelligent integration. Kegels give you the awareness, but squats give that awareness a job to do. A truly healthy pelvic floor isn't one that's clenched all the time. It's one that can contract, lengthen, and most importantly, coordinate with your entire body through everything you do. If you found this myth-busting approach to fitness helpful and you want more tips on building a body that's strong from the inside out, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss what's next.